Hey, what's up? It's Milk TV back again for another video. And in this video, I will be discussing what MVP battle is, followed by some tips, strategies, and party compositions that might make your MVP battle easier. But before we start, don't forget to click on subscribe and click on the notification bell beside it so you will be the first to watch my newest videos. MVP Battle is an event every Friday from 7pm to 10pm GMT plus 7. In this event, a set of MVPs and mini bosses will spawn in a certain map and your party as well as other parties can hunt those MVPs. But there is a catch, the map is open for PvP so you can PvP other people and they can PvP you and your party members as well. The MVPs and mini bosses in this event have multiplied health pools which means it takes longer to kill them compared to their regular counterparts in the outside world. You and your party mates need to at least be base level 70 to join the event. Then once you're ready to go, as the party leader you can join the event by either talking to this NPC named Altos in Frontier Square or by clicking on this icon which shows up during the event. Take note that after entering a match, your party will have a 10 minute cooldown period where you cannot enter another match unless you kill an MVP or the timer ends on your current match. Once your party is in the map, you cannot use fly wings or transformation scrolls. When you die, you can get resurrected by your priest if you have one or your party mates using the Yggdrasil leaf. If you choose to leave and revive, you will be resurrected on your party's assigned respawn point somewhere in the map. You are limited to 4 MVPs and 4 mini bosses per event, which means that you will not get drops if you kill a 5th MVP or mini boss. Also, the regular MVP and mini boss mechanics apply for this event, which means that first hit, most damage output, most monster aggro attracted, effective healing, last hit, and stuff like that will help you and your party get MVP. For mini bosses though, it's still gonna be first hit, though you can reset the first hit if you kill the person who hit the mini boss first. So what do you get if you've successfully killed an MVP or a mini? If your party has won a boss fight, each party member will receive certain amounts of honor proof which you can use to buy stuff in your guild's vending machine. You will also get certain amounts of mithril stone which is the stone used for refining headgears. You also get the regular drops from the MVPs and mini bosses, the same drops you get from them in the outside world. So now let's talk about party composition. The party composition I would recommend is one tank. A knight or a paladin that can use taunt so your other party members don't have to worry about aggro. One healer to keep the tank and other party members alive. Two damage dealers which focuses on the MVP or mini boss you're trying to kill. And one party defender which preferably has full PvP equipment to protect your party and fend off other people. Assassins and stalkers work best for these roles as they can go invisible and scout the perimeter around your party. Of course, you can still do MVP battle with a different set of jobs or classes but I really found this setup very comfortable and balanced in terms of offense and defense. Now let's go to the actual gameplay. So when you are first teleported in the map, there is currently a bug where some party members will not be in the party. So the first thing you want to do is reparty and regroup. Talk to your party beforehand and agree on what MVP or mini boss to hunt. So once you're in the match, you don't have to worry about it. The first thing you need to do after you've settled in is to look for your target. After that, your tank should drag the monster to one of the many corners in the game. Take note that your party has a set spawn point, so dragging the monster to that corner where you respawn when you die is a very good strategy as when you die, you can just respawn and instantly get back into position, saving your priest a couple of blue gems as well as the skill cooldowns. Being in a corner is very ideal in this situation because you don't have to worry about random people coming in from all directions. This is also to make sure that you know where your enemies will come from and your party defender will have an easier time because he doesn't have to cover more ground. Having only one party defender is more than enough since other people will most likely not have anti-demi-human equips on since they are there for the same reason to kill MVPs and mini bosses, which means that most people inside the MVP battle have their regular monster hunting equipment on. So again, back yourself up in a corner just like this and you're good to go. Talking about roles, as a tank, preferably paladin or an off tank lord knight, you want to continuously use taunt to keep the MVP or mini boss away from your damage dealers and priest. As a priest, you want to continuously have buffs up, heal and resurrect when needed. Be careful of both monsters and players as you're a top target of the opposing parties. As a damage dealer, you want to continuously keep up DPS. Make sure to position your character in a way where enemies won't easily reach you as you're a hot target for opposing parties as well. As a party defender, your main role is to scout the area behind your party and make sure no one tries to engage with your party. If there are multiple attackers, remember to target the ones that are easier to kill first. One quick tip, if you are trying to farm a specific MVP, once you've killed that MVP in your current match, you could leave and queue for another match so you can use up all 4 of your MVP limit on that specific MVP. 
During one of the past MVP battles, Garm was one of the monsters in the list, so what people did was kill Garm, leave the match, re for another match, kill Garm again, and so on until they have 4 kills of Garm using the 4 limits on Garm only. This was actually the reason why the price of Fairy in Battle and Fang of Garm decreased a bit. Most players hunted 4 Garms and got those items as a reward. So I guess that's it for this video. I hope I helped you guys on this one. Once again, this is Milk TV. Comment, like, subscribe, and see you next time.